Hey guys! Um, I'm at the river or at our river house in Needles, California. I'm over on the Arizona side right now and just thought I'd pop in to my local Goodwill to see if they have any furniture to flip. So I'm going to take you guys with me and let's go check it out. Okay, that was a total score. So excited. I got two matching side tables, which are more prevent French provincial style, which is more my style. And then two tables, one a coffee table, one a side table. Anthropology inspired. They're rounded on the corners. So I'm gonna see if I can do something with those. These are the set of the French Provincial side tables that I scored that day at the Goodwill in Arizona. These weren't that dirty, but they did have a certain musty odor to them, which after painting seems to be better now. Time to strip the top. I was hoping that these were a different wood than what they actually are. Wanted to do a stain on the top and a paint on the bottom, but after stripping them, I realized that they were a type of wood that doesn't stain well. After using stripper, you always want to neutralize with some mineral spirits, and I like to use mine with steel wool. And you just go on top and scrub off any of the excess dirt left behind, and it also gives a nice clean palette for painting or staining later on. This drawer rail was split, so I just used some wood glue and clamped it overnight. Okay guys, so far with this piece, we have stripped the top, which I shouldn't have done because once I stripped it, I found out it's solid wood cherry, which can't be stained. So you, with the cherry wood, you keep having tannins that come up through the top. So it's gonna have to be primered and then painted instead of a stain on top. So just a little bit of a different plan of action. So we're gonna prime it next. I filled in some of the holes for the drawer pulls because the new pulls I got are a different size. So I'm waiting for the Bondo to set up before I can sand that down. I have done like scuff sand on all the other parts that I did not strip and cleaned it real well and wiped it down. And now I'm just waiting to do my primer. Okay, bye.
using bin primer here because that is going to stop all those tannins from coming through and having some bleed through. Um, just You just want to make sure that you stir this well. There was a little bit of sediment on the bottom where it just settles. It's not very thick though as you can see as I poured it. I wanted to roll this on because I had heard that rolling was easier and it definitely was. I did like rolling so I'm just covering all those pieces up so that none of the um, cherry tannins from the wood come through when I'm painting. I was just super excited to use this new paint from Fusion. It's a mineral paint and um, this color is called Eucalyptus and it's beautiful. I really, really like the color. When the paint comes, it has this little piece of tape around it to prevent any um, spilling during um, shipping. A little bit did come through and that's okay. I wanted to use a foam brush here just to prove that you don't have to have a fancy brush to put paint on. And I really do like the way that it laid down the paint and I was able to get really good and quick coverage with the foam brush. I did say this was a little bit of a fail because I had wanted to paint the top a different color um, and I just was in La La Land and totally went to go and paint it. What I ended up doing was because I caught my mistake so quickly was I was able to wipe off that paint with a um, baby wipe and it came right off so that was good news. I put two coats of the Fusion Mineral Paint on and it gave really good coverage. I did sand with 220 really lightly in between. And here we go from making these traditional to modern. I was originally going to take the whole top or bottom piece off and then I realized why not just cut off the piece that I really didn't like. and. I wouldn't have to spend the money for new feet. So I had this idea and I ran it by one of my friends who also does some woodworking and she was like, yeah, I think that would totally work. So I tried it and it did. And since this piece of furniture was so heavy and solid wood, the um, little feet that I ended up with were super solid and sturdy. And here I am just, you know, um, getting rid of those jigsaw marks and sanding everything smooth before I go to paint that little inside frame of the feet. I also ordered the milk paint from Fusion. This is an almond latte color and you just mix it half and half, half water, half paint and stir real well. I wanted to do a different color on top and then do a little bit of like dark wax. Um, I gotta say that this paint was a little stinky guys and when I mixed it I should have maybe let it sit a little bit longer because I was noticing some streaking of the different colors that make up this actual color the different pigments I could see some red streaks in there and I think that's probably my fault for not letting it sit long enough as the directions say and then I wanted to put a little dark stain over the top just to kind of give it some dimension I found this Java gel in my cupboard in my garage and I really I remember using this Java gel in my shop like maybe five six years ago it had a really hard crust over the top of it um, and I just sort of took my paint stick and jammed it through the crust and there was actually still Java gel in the bottom of the can so I just took the crust off and used it and it worked great so don't throw out those old paint cans that you think um, have nothing underneath they usually form that a top crust on top and then you can just take that off and usually there's paint or stain underneath that and here they are all finished i like how you can see the wood grain 
through the paint and through the java gel. I did take a 220 sanding block and sanded back some of the java gel to reveal some of the paint underneath and I think it turned out really pretty.